Good morning. Of course, I have no idea if it's morning where you are, because people from all around the world watch some of these videos. It's morning for me. I'll point the, actually look at the camera. Um, today's video is, as always, sponsored by lots and lots of coffee. I made a post on LinkedIn the other day about working smarter, not harder. The other day, maybe two days ago, to me, maybe six years ago to you. Today is uh, late April 2023. Uh, but it's about uh, repetitive tasks. Now, we've all heard work smarter, not harder, and we look for ways in, in SQL Server to do more efficient code. If you're writing code and you're not looking for efficient, well, you need to level up your game. That, that's the goal. Um, but especially as a DBA, I have a lot of different clients. I get uh, a lot of clients that don't have a DBA on staff, so I see a lot of the same things over and over. Uh, because Microsoft defaults are not great. But sometimes I see some worse practices that... Nobody knows the worst practices if you don't tell them. I ran across one of these the other day, uh, and what it boiled down to is they have 100 databases that are schema-wise the same, multi-client system. And <clears throat> there were some settings that we've got to change. Um, I'm going to pick on auto-shrink and things like that, because you know, auto-shrink sucks and don't use it. There was a time 20 years ago, maybe there was a use case. But anyway, there were just some basic settings, uh, check some that weren't set, auto-shrink was turned on various other things. All the databases were in simple recovery model and they wanted point in time recovery, et cetera, et cetera. But I was looking at having to write 300 altered database statements or worse, click through the GUI and change all three of those settings and save, and then do it again and do it again. Clicking through multiple times will screw you up. You'll miss one. You'll click the wrong thing. You'll need to go get more coffee. Let me bring up the imaginary coffee mug. It's it's fraught with opportunities for error. So enough of that. I'm going to show you how I do this when I need to do the same thing for a whole pile of databases. All right. I'm just really hoping that you can actually see my screen here. Now I don't have to re-record everything. So if I want to do something, I start with something as simple as I'm going to select, you know, database name or the name from all the databases from uh Sys databases, and I'm going to also type out an alter, um, alter database statement. So generically, da, 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 name. Yes, we all know at this point that I can't type with squat. Squat. Master does databases. Is that the right one? Yeah. Yay. Okay. So I don't really want the. I don't want to touch the system databases where. I think it's DBID, maybe DBID, uh, it's changed so many times, it's ridiculous. Greater than four, is that right? That looks right, and let's just make it pretty, order by name, because in case you need to write, you know, do this for 100 databases, except these other three that have their special use case, they'll be easier to find. Uh, and this is kind of important where we're going to go with this. I'm going to press Control T and get results to grid to uh, text instead of grid, and I've got that. And just because I'm not going to want it at the end, said no count on, and I'll, I'll type it correctly this time. So my results are that. So essentially, what I'm going to be able to is in that bottom part of the screen, I'm going to copy and everything, everything, copy and paste everything but the completion time. Once I'm done with this, so what I want this to do is generate alter database statements for me and I'm going to keep it real simple so normally it would be let's be proper alter database you know Bob set recovery full simple setting want to change the recovery model from simple to full now Unrelated to how, how to type efficiency SQL, if you do this, you need to take a full backup for it to actually start acting like a full recovery model database. Transaction logs will start filling up, but they won't back up because they don't have a full database from. Whole different topic. So this is the statement I want, this right here. But I want it to be dynamically generated. So I'm going to make a select statement. Select this string. Include a space. I want that portion. I want to add in a placeholder, variable, whatever you want to call it. I'm sure there's a proper name that I don't know. So the database name and another space and then set recovery full. We'll do this to it. 
and then we'll go down the carriage return that I just did is important by the way it makes it much prettier so all I've done really is I created a select statement and it's going to have some a string the database name and some more string that eventually when it runs it'll create a proper statement for me and all I'm doing is that query I wrote earlier is now a proper query and it's just going to look like um, do, 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 do. and this is why you want it in uh, text results to text because when I go and take this and I copy and paste it I want it to actually be lined up <laughs> I have a database called full let's just ignore that and this is why we go through and look at it some databases don't apply to what you're doing so all of these are actually databases that may or may not be in full recovery model but they are now it's that simple now if I wanted to do something else um, let's just strip that all out well let's strip most of that out everything but the no count let's get rid of that let's say you've got to do something with jobs well same process select and when I don't know how many rows there are or what the column names are I do set top one star from MSDB I still can't type. I have not learned to type in the last three minutes. I promise. I, know I won't ever. From MSDB. And the names have changed a, long a lot over the years. So let's see if that even works. Hey. Top one star. There's the job. So if I wanted to do something to every job name, like disable it. Would be again name put the brackets around it because name is a keyword this is your this is your starting point to be able to start generating like I just did you would then you move this down to another line and you would start putting in whatever code you want here if you're selecting something or changing all the job owners to SA start with your select statement to get the columns you need to have in your your generated alter and uh, just go from there Code that writes code. It's a very basic thing that most new DBAs and most developers are never going to realize. And it hinges on you knowing enough about the basic system tables like sysdatabases and sysjobs um, and any other and, and how they work. I didn't show it to you, but in the alter database statement for the recovery model, if you look the alter database command up on Microsoft's uh, you know, learn.microsoft.com, It'll actually show you, you know, option, comma, dot, dot, dot in the syntax. What that means is you could do set recovery model full, comma, auto shrink off, comma, another option setting, another option setting. You could do a comma delimited list, all of that in one in four lines of code, including the carriage return. And now you've got a thing to change a whole bunch of databases at once. Now, maybe you only have three databases, copy and paste, do it in a GUI, whatever. Fine, that's not going to take any longer than writing some code. Save that code, and it becomes real useful. Um, I'm over here looking at the screen, not the camera. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm not usually this weirded out on camera. Uh, but if you've got 100 databases or 1,000 databases, and I've actually seen a uh, SQL instance that uh, had over 12,000 databases on it, and they were all set to auto close and auto shrink and all this other crazy stuff and it was killing the box because it was just flat out too many of them but to change all those four lines of code hope that's helpful uh if you have questions throw them in the comments if you have t sql syntax errors don't i'm not gonna respond to that i might tell you good luck uh, I have not been a programmer or SQL Server developer since 2003. I'm a DBA that writes hacky scripts like this to get my job done faster and charge my clients less money. I write a script once, somebody pays for that, probably me, and then I never charge a client for it because I'm a good guy. Hope that helps. Talk to you later. Bye.